Hello everyone, my name is Raven, and welcome to Raven Gaming Labs, and welcome back to another lovely GZ Doom tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about uh, point lights and real-time lights. Someone had requested uh, that I cover this because, you know, the original uh, sectors and, you know, light and shadows video wasn't exactly like how some of the other more modern, um, you know, GZ Doom games uh, tend to be. So uh, the first thing we want to do is we actually want to create our light. So we'll hit T and that'll put us in things mode, as you can see down here. And then we'll just right click somewhere and we'll go to properties. I don't know why it had me on the action tag miscellaneous, but there we go. And we'll scroll down to the bottom and there's a couple different lights. There's static lights, static point light, SD ray info. We're not going to cover those. What we're going to look at is all of the dynamic lights. Now, all of these lights are point lights, and then there are also spotlights, but we're going to cover those in a separate video. And I highly recommend that you play around with these lights, you know, look at them, see what they, you know, just test them and just play with them because they're relatively simple and easy. And they're also fairly straightforward as to what they do. And I'm just going to go on ahead and hit OK. And now I'm going to go back into here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go and hit Q and I'm going to hit H to hide uh, the highlight there. And you'll notice that we have this lovely little uh, radius here where the light is actually affecting in the editor. Now, if you go up here and you want to select uh, dynamic lights and show animated dynamic lights, you want to make sure that that is on. Uh, if it's, You can also turn it off and so forth, but I want it turned on. And now I'm going to click our light. And I'll use the mouse wheel to uh, raise it up. But I kind of want it to be sort of in the middle. And just like any other thing, whoops, sorry, wrong button. Uh, you can right click to drag it around uh, in the uh, 2D mode. And then we'll go back to 3D mode here. And we'll right click. And we'll go back to the action tag miscellaneous. Now, the most important parts, obviously, you can add uh, actions to your things. But... We don't need to do any of that, but the most important part are these settings right here. So these are your color values and your intensity is the radius and how bright it is. So I think I'm going to make this 512 by 512 and then I'm going to actually go up to here to this color and I'm going to alter this in some manner here. Let's make it kind of blue. So 67, 188, 214. And we'll hit OK. And now the room is like extremely blue. And uh, it could be a little funny in the, um, you know, uh, within the editor. With, and obviously, you can see it's kind of, it's kind of glitchy. Uh, this is because the editor will render the lights in real time, but it doesn't render stuff like shadows and so forth. Now, if we were to just go ahead and run this and then go over this way and over here, you will immediately notice uh, that it is actually occluding and it is creating a very nice blue light and it's not blue here. And we got a really nice shadow here. And if you don't have any shadows, you may have to turn them on. So hit escape, go down to options, do a full options menu, go to display options and then dynamic light options and you want to make sure that they're on and you can also turn on the effect sprites particles uh, you can also turn on the light shadow maps which you can see disables that there you can also adjust the quality and the filter so you can set it to nearest and that's pretty much like a very uh hard shadow you know it's perfect it's like a stencil shadow uh, it depends on what kind of effect you're you're going for with, you know, this would be something like if you wanted it to be a little more original OG Doom, I suppose. I'm going to set that back to the lovely high quality PCF shadow there. And now I'm just going to exit out of here. Now, you also notice that this is like extremely bright, like, oh my gosh. So we're going to go into sector mode and we're going to select all the sectors that this light actually, you know, comes into contact with. 
And I made a mistake there. My bad. And we'll just... Okay. Didn't do that. None of y'all saw that. All right, why am I making so many mistakes here? This is insane. This is not hard to select sectors. Okay. And now we'll just right click. And we're going to go to the brightness here. And I'm going to set it down to like 32 maybe. Nah, maybe 64. Not really. Yeah, hey, let's do 64. It'll be very dark. It's kind of crazy that that's actually... Hmm. Actually, let's do 96 because I don't want it to be too dark. Okay, let's let's try this. This is definitely one of those things where you do have to play with it uh, to figure out, you know, uh, what looks best. Yeah, there we go. That looks much better. So now we have a really nice, and this is a completely dynamically lit room. There's a lot more to cover with the real-time lighting inside of GZ Doom. Uh, but this is how you create a point light and, you know, place it in your scene and start lighting your scene. So the sector light, so to speak, the sector brightness is more like your ambient brightness. And then you have... Uh, the actual point light add to the scene's lighting system. You use both of them. They're both extremely important for this system. Uh, you know, don't think that you can get away with, uh, you know, not utilizing the sector brightness. Uh, but it is something that you do have to juggle a little bit, as you can tell. And they definitely don't uh, blend very well uh, at all. So that is something you'd have to adjust. Like this, the sector brightness here needs to be lowered and so on. Or, you know, you need to do your whole level. Basically, if you're going to use, uh, if you're, if you're going to use, uh, you know, dynamic lighting within your, you know, your, your game, your world, so to speak, then you need to use it everywhere. Um, you know, you probably don't necessarily want to use it uh, in just one spot or anything like that. Because as you can see, it kind of looks kind of odd. And by kind of odd, I mean it looks really, really, really odd. Um, so, yeah. Anyhow, that's pretty much it. That's how you do it. It's pretty simple, pretty basic. And like I said, you know, there are a lot of other options you can play with. Like you can go into the properties here and you can set this to like a flicker light, for example. And this will reset everything. But we'll do the primary distance to like, I don't know, 128 with the secondary distance of 64. And I'll go back into sector mode and I'm going to set this back to 128. Just eh, let's do... Let's do 156, just a, a little bit brighter. And if we go into the 3D view, we can see that, you know, it just kind of flickers, which is exactly, you know, kind of what you would think it would do, given, you know, the name of it and all. And we'll go in here really fast and we can see what it looks like. And we can see that it affects our uh, player character there. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much that. It is actually, honestly, truly very, very simple and very, very easy. And I will see you all in the next one where we will cover something. Who knows what we'll cover. Um, but you guys have a good one. And I will see you all then. Until then. Happy Doom mapping. Hey everyone. Thanks for watching Raven Gaming Labs. Thanks to all the members and viewers who make RGL possible. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell so that you can be notified. If you want to become a member, hit the join button or link in the description below. Members get early access to videos, member exclusive content, and more. As well, don't forget to join our awesome community over at Discord. Y'all have a good one.